Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to the, as of current, final Snarled videos uh, that have been requested as a donation reward from Venom0027. So we have four more videos today, the last four on the list. We have Switched Bags, The House of Dune, Child of the Cliff, and What You Can't See. So... Yeah, interesting sounding set, and um, it sucks that we're at the last set of these that were requested, because I think I said it last time, I actually really enjoy reacting to these, I, I've, I've been having a lot of fun with them, and I would love to react to more. Um, it's just, I don't know if I'm going to really, like, find not really find the motivation but like make the time to do it on my own time you know um i feel like more mo i guess still motivation i feel more motivated to do it when it's a you know a reward like this and there's likely so many more of these on um on their channel on the youtube channel so I feel like there's plenty more that can be done, but at this point, I just I don't know if Venom's going to donate any for any more of these or or not. Uh, I think kind of leaning towards no, from what was said last time, um, which sucks. But I mean, it's always as as always up to the person donating what they want to donate for and all. Um. But I'm interested to see what this last set is. So based off of the titles, um, switched bags could mean a lot of things. Uh, when I think of something like that, I think of Home Alone, actually. Um, which one was it? I think it was Home Alone 3, where the kid um, accidentally switches bags with like these criminals who are like stealing a quote-unquote toy that has a uh computer uh, a computer chip in it that could help them like do something i don't remember exactly but it's like it, that's what it makes me think of um but i could see how switched bags could end up with something scary in that regard because it's like the bags may look similar but the bag you open may have something dark in it or how just i don't know a severed head <laughs> Um, the House of Dune is probably the one of these that is hardest to guess on because it sounds like it's a specific thing. Like, it sounds very specific. Um, honestly, it just makes me think of Game of Thrones, and I've barely seen any of that. <laughs> um, I'm not watching House of the Dragon, by the way, um, because I've only seen, like, one season of Game of Thrones and then a few random clips here. Yeah, I think it was only one season that I saw. Um, but yeah, House of Dune tells me pretty much nothing. So, nothing to work on there. Child of the Cliff makes me think of Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea. Uh, the Studio Ghibli film. Um, but Child of the Cliff, I don't... I, I can see, I guess, how that could be scary. Like... Maybe some child who grows up, like, on a cliff, like, secluded from the rest of humanity or something. Some kind of, like, supernatural, uh, uh what's the word? Not, like, not a ghost story, but a, uh, there's a word for it, and my mind is blanking. I've used it in these videos before. But my mind's completely blanking on it. But just some superstition, basically. Um, that's what that comes across to me as. And then we have What You Can't See. This one was actually higher on the list, technically speaking. Um, but 
I've chosen to put this one last because it's also the longest out of all of the ones we've had. Most of these tend, the video tends to be like somewhere between five and 10 minutes. This one, the video is 32 minutes. Now, some of that's not just the uh, actual, you know, content. Some of it's like, you know, the, the opening stuff, the um, advertisement for the sponsor and everything and the closing stuff. That, that takes up time, obviously. But it's still like almost 30 minutes of content. It's like a lot for one of these. So it's it's probably going to be a very like involved one. And I, I'm interested to see how it ends. Uh, what you can't see. It, it's, a, it's another one that's very vague. It, it's another one that it's just it's hard to tell what that's going to mean. Because honestly, it could mean almost anything. Um, like, I, I think it's like based off the phrase, what you can't see can't harm you or whatnot. But it's like, again, what that actually would mean for the scary story is kind of up in the air. Um, but I'm interested to find out. I'm interested to see what this last set has in store for us. Um, and hopefully it ends up being a good set, like a, one of the better sets, for sure. Um, as a note, I am recording this at 8.30 in the morning. Um, it, it would probably be brighter out, but I think it's pretty overcast outside, which affects things on the camera, unfortunately. Um, and raising the brightness of the camera, just it makes it look, like, really off. I don't know how else to put it. Because this is... This is basically natural lighting for the most part. Um, I do have a lamp over here that's on, but this is pretty much natural lighting in, in my room or in my living room. Um, obviously, to me, it's brighter out, but the camera, I guess, darkens it like just naturally. Um, and obviously, you've noticed the darker like just I was gonna say visuals but that's not quite right just you've you've noticed to be darker in some videos and everything but it's like I I always hate when that, that happens because it's like I always it always feels wrong you know but it's like light getting a light like an actual like light for all of this like a ring light or something would be so expensive and it's like I'm already I already try to save up for certain things and everything. Like right now, I'm trying to save up the money for the for Pokemon Scarlet when that comes out in November. Um, but like like here, I'll show you what it looks like when I turn on the brightness. See, it looks it kind of. I guess you could say it looks washed out. Like even if I change the contrast to try to match it, it's it just it doesn't look right. Um. Satur I can bring up the saturation that just makes the colors look better, but there's no way to really make it look right. It always looks like something's off. So no matter what I do, it's it's not going to look great. Again, I would need like an actual light. Um. And I have a I have one of my other webcams which I think are right in here, maybe. One of the old webcams I had. I thought they were right in here. Those are just mice. I don't. I don't know where they're at at the moment. I'm not gonna search forever. But I had a. I had an older one that has like obviously lower video quality, but it had a light on it, and it's like. I don't know. It's like you you could think like oh you could plug that in and everything and, and like not use it for the webcam but use it for the light and all. It's like maybe but at the same time it's like one I don't have a lot of USB ports and I'm already using for the the microphone and the webcam and everything and it's like I don't know. Because then if the light outside does get better and brighter and everything then i'm just kind of left like it, it's going to be like looking too bright 
so it's like it, it's the natural light is going to continue to affect things as it changes that's that's the big issue um but luckily for this reaction at least it kind of works just because it's a spooky reaction <laughs> um but yeah I, i'm sorry for taking a moment to ramble about that but it's like I, I i don't know if i've ever really gone into addressing this before um I, I know i've like mentioned it in various videos where it's like oh sorry for the lighting it's just the, it's overcast outside or whatnot but i've never really gone into it um to my knowledge at least i might have but um so i i kind of wanted to do so just to let you guys know what the deal with all of that was and the fact that there's not really much of anything i can currently do so i do apologize for that um if i can figure something out i i might i don't know we'll, we'll see either way like i said it kind of works for this anyway so for the time being i think we'll be okay um but that being said we're gonna get right into this and hope for the best so when the screen fades to black pause this redirect and go to the description below follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it come back here to the redirect and resume play because after it fades to black and it fades back in everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode so that being said thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you at the reaction and we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three two one now so yeah this set was very good um like this was actually a really good set but also at the same time this set was surprisingly enough deeply upsetting to me <laughs> um like, like there was a couple points where i like was like brought to crying and i had to take a moment at one point to just compose myself which i really wasn't expecting because it's like, it, like obviously there's some scary situations talked about and everything in here but it was it was more so intense to me with the specifics of it that it actually got to me and it's like i i kind of love that this ended up being the final set in that regard because at least for now again i would love to do more of these i i would really love to do more of these if venom wishes to donate for more of them but if not uh again that's obviously completely up to them up to them um but yeah so switched bag let's talk about this so this one was i think i would say the most real um because, because even as it notes at the end, this is a very real problem. Uh, this one has nothing to do with supernatural or, or slashers or anything. This is about human trafficking. We have this girl who accidentally gets her suitcase switched with an identical, a seemingly identical one, mostly identical, uh, coming home from a trip. Um, she, the only difference is that there's a lock on it. When she brings it home and is getting ready to open it up, she she notices the lock and suddenly the bag starts shaking. She's eventually able to open it up, break the lock and everything, and finds a young girl inside. Obviously panicked, she calls her, I believe it was uncle, who's a police officer. They form a plan and still, because the guy called, because, you know, her info was on her bag's luggage tag, they plan a exchange um she goes to the exchange <coughs> excuse me fills the bag with rocks to simulate the um weight of the girl and everything but she and her uncle clearly forget one very big important detail and that is replacing the lock that's a very big thing and it's like instantly like i knew that was that was going to need to be done if they were going to do this exchange because that's kind of a big noticeable factor um so when they get there and it's revealed that the lock isn't on there it's like 
why would you not replace the lock, you dummies? Like, that's kind of like... That's the most important aspect to doing this and to tricking this guy. I mean, it all ended up working out, mind you, but still. Um, so he notices that the lock is not there. And it's at this point that he realizes that she obviously found the girl inside and freed her and all. And so then he starts to get close to her and is like, how old did you say you were again? And it's very clear, like, oh, he's thinking of trafficking her now in, instead, kind of as a replacement. And he's, and, and like the visuals show him like getting very uncomfortable with her in that regard. Um, but her uncle comes out, uh, has him arrested. She ends up, pa er, I, she ends up like, uh, is this the one where, hold on. No, I think she just gets away. There's one of them where the character passes out. I don't think it's this one. Oh wait, no, it is this one. She, she I think she hits her head or something. She passes out and wakes up later and basically all is good again he was arrested she's safe now the girl is they've already taken care of helping the girl who uh will get over her physical injuries and everything but you know the trauma will last quite a lot longer um this one was the first to hit me obviously being the first we reacted to um because of how real it is I've luckily never experienced anything like this with, like, my personal life, whether for me or anyone I know, luckily. But I've heard so many stories about human trafficking and uh, from people who have been the victims of it and everything, and even people who have worked to stop it. And it is, it, it's absolutely horrifying that people would do this to other humans that they would literally treat them as property and the worst part is some of the w ways and reasons they're trafficked like sex trafficking for example is like I'm trying to keep myself composed because this genuinely upsets the shit out of me People who, who do this, who treat people... And, and, and this kind of goes for any case where people treat others like property or whatnot. Or, or is just less than human in any really notable way like this. It's like that always upsets me. Um, I, I think I talked about this in my Kakiguri twin reactions uh, with the entire uh, um, pet status tags and everything. Um, but that shit has, like, legitimately always really upset me. And, and I, I think this is the biggest reason why, because of stuff like human trafficking. And it never goes into full detail on whether this was, like, what the purpose of this human trafficking was. Like, it could have been for sex trafficking. And it's, like, just the idea of that, this, this girl who's clearly very young and everything being trafficked for that it's like it we're gonna move on i i, I it's it's upsetting me talking about this we're gonna move on the second of these was the House of Dune. This one, it, I was like very close to getting upset over this one as well, but I, the ending kind of left it a little open as to what actually happened, and that kind of threw me off a little and, and allowed me to keep my composure. So there's these three friends. They live in a town that's not really superstitious or anything, um, except for one case. There's this house in the town called the House of Dune. I presume in connection to someone who lived there prior. 
Um, it, it's this old abandoned house, and everyone in the town is superstitious about it. So, one day, uh, the narrator and their two friends are going out, and one of the friends, Fraser, um, is basically a daredevil asshole kind of character. Um, he's unafraid of everything and just wants to kind of prove himself at all times. You know, those kind of assholes. Um, but they, they stop by the house of Dune, and he's like, you know, I'm sick of everybody who's constantly so scared of this house. I bet we can stay the night in there, and we'll be fine. And he can't convince the others to join him, so he goes alone. And he even tells them, it's like, okay, I'll knock on the wall of the, of the attic, every 15 minutes to let you know I'm okay. And he goes in, they stay out in the car, and he does so. He knocks on the wall of the attic. I don't know how they would hear that, though. Like, what would the attic wall have to be made of for them to actually hear that? He would have to knock really fucking loud. And if it's something like bricks, they will not be able to hear it. Um, I, I don't know how they would be able to hear him knocking on the attic wall. Like, looking over every 15 minutes and seeing him, like, waving at, uh, or, or hanging out at, at the window, like, that's one thing, but. So he does this, and every 15 minutes he knocks on a wall, he, he like, pokes his hand out uh, at the window and waves and all. Um, the two end up falling, the two in the car end up falling asleep, wake up sometime later, it's, un, it, it's literally left indeterminate. Um, but the knocking has increased to every five seconds, which is a massive increase from 15 minutes. <laughs> um, they don't think much of anything of it, though, and go back to sleep and wake up in the morning. Um, at this point, it's like he should be out already, but the knocking is continuing, so they go up there. And they decide to go up there because uh, they're feeling a little better now. It's like, oh, he seems to have survived the night. He's probably just pulling a prank on us and prove and trying to prove himself even more. Um, so they feel a little more comfortable going in at this time. They go in, go up to the attic, and find his dead body hanging from the rafters, um, swinging in a way to where it hits against the wall every five seconds, which, again, I don't know how they would be able to hear that. Um, from outside, in the car, like, even with their windows open, I don't know how they'd be able to hear that. Um, but either way, like, I, I was, I was going to start, I was starting to feel a little upset, but then I started questioning it, like, pretty much right away. It was like, this instantaneous reaction, it's like, oh, I feel upset. Wait, what happened? <laughs> it, it's like, it, it was that quick for me. Because it's like, obviously my first thought, the instant it went through my head, person hanging from the ceiling, dead, my thought went to suicide, instantly. And as someone who, as I've talked about plenty on the channel, um, had been depressed and attempted suicide multiple times in 2013, um, it, it's a very personal thing to me. and. Even hearing stories about it or whatnot can sometimes very much affect me. Um, but again, because it was un the ending was left so unclear about what actually happened, it's like my mind kind of instantly clicked back into, wait, what happened here? What, what, what's, what's this actually trying to imply? So it, it, it basically kept me composed and kept me away from you know, actually feeling upset. Because I was wondering, like, wait, did he commit suicide? Is that what it's trying to say? Or is it saying that he was killed and strung up there? And Because the, the entire thing's based on, like, the entire house is, you know, steeped in superstition and stuff. And the fact that he's, like, you know, waving back and forth to such a notable degree that he's hitting the wall every five seconds. It's like... What, what's actually going on here? And I, I feel like it's left open-ended to keep you as the listener slash viewer guessing in that regard. But it just kind of makes me confused. Um, so we go on, we move on though. Child of the Cliff, this one upset me. 
Like this one, this one upset me the most out of the four of them. This one actually made me angry, like like vitriolically angry, or I guess that's probably a weird word to use there. Viscerally angry. Let's use that. Um, there's these two parents. They're lovely people. They're beautiful people, and everyone tells them that because they're conventionally attractive, oh, they don't have to worry. Their baby will definitely be conventionally attractive too. Um, so they eventually do have a baby. Um, they, uh, they decide to have the birth at home with a midwife and everything, a natural birth without the hospital and everything, which I, is that a thing people still do? I mean, possibly, but I don't know. Feels like an odd choice to do in this day and age. Um, and honestly, a less safe choice to be fair. Um, but it's it's not my body. It's not my uh, decision to make. Um, so they have the baby, and it's a baby girl. They're all excited. Um, the midwife is, like, super happy for them. But the parents suddenly sour on, on their daughter because she's not conventionally attractive, basically. She has some possible, I guess, birth defects where she's a little, like, very, very minorly disformed, um, or deformed, rather. I keep using the wrong words, or, or actually, I don't think disformed is a word, so I think it is deformed. But either way, it's super minor, and it's not a big deal, and it's, it's not important. I kind of made a point of that when, like, everyone was, like, when it was saying, like, everyone was telling them their baby would be beautiful and, like, assuring them of that. It's like, why is that important? You know, other things are more important, like the baby's health. And so it's like, I'm, I, I was already on that kind of idea. It's like, why does that matter? But then their reaction to the baby being, quote, unquote, ugly, oh, that pissed me off. Like, just an instant rage filled me that I was not expecting, and it, it actually threw me off that I was that angry that quickly and suddenly. But, like, the instant, like, they are, like, so upset about the way their baby looks like that, it's like, I'm sorry. If you have a child and your first thoughts when seeing that child are, you, my baby's ugly, fuck you. I'm not, uh, no, fuck you. There is, I'm sorry. They shouldn't be parents. If that's going to be your first thought when seeing your baby because they're not, because the baby's not conventionally attractive, doesn't look like you, and then afterwards you're going to say like, oh, that baby's not of God, it's of the devil, just because it's ugly, fuck you. You absolute fucking cunts. That pisses me off. Like, it is it is a parent's job. It is their duty to be loving towards their child. Like, that is, that is a requirement. That is not a choice. That is not something you get to determine based on factors like their appearance you love your child and if you don't love your child you do not have a right to be a parent they then sometime later i don't remember if it says exactly how long they go to this place because they like to travel they go to this place they uh really love it's their favorite uh, place to travel to. Uh, they go towards this, like, I, I guess, like, picturesque cliff and everything. And then she just fucking drops the baby off the cliff. And it's like, oh my god. I, I was, I, I, mm. Even just talking about it now, it's like making me so fucking rageful. Um, it is just... She literally murdered her baby... Because it was ugly. Because she was ugly. And, and and the husband's response was just like rubbing her back and saying, we'll try again. And oh my fucking god. Oh my... Mm.
Like, I was in a legitimate shock when that happened. Like, I, I actually wasn't expecting that at all. Um, e even despite the title and everything, it's like I, I was just kind of watching and just kind of like... I, I was already angry at that point, obviously. But I wasn't expecting her to drop, just drop the baby off the cliff to its death. I, it literally caught me so off guard. It just, it, it was so shocking. I, I think that is the part where I started to cry. I, I might be wrong, but I think that is. Um, but I, but my rage basically skyrocketed at that point to the, I was on the verge of like going off in a way that's probably very unhealthy. <laughs> Um, I, w I was not okay. And, and again, even just talking about it now and thinking about it, it's like, I, that's, hmm. I'm not okay at all with that. They, they go back, they apparently do sometime later have another baby. And it's, it's beautiful, it's nice, it has their features and everything. Fuck them, they deserve the worst, they deserve to fucking die. Um, I don't give a shit. It deserve they deserve her to be painful. Mm. What, how did they explain it? How did they? What did they say? How how did they explain the fact that their baby also just was suddenly gone and like? So they have the baby, grows up, this young girl, like, I don't remember if they said an age, but I, I guess, like, I don't know, six or so. Um, they go to the, they take her to the same area, the same, I don't know, park or whatever it is. Um, but the girl starts showing signs of being scared of it. She's like, I don't want to be here and everything. It's scary. But they insist and basically drag her into the park to show her their favorite spot and all despite her as they put it making a scene and it's like if if that's like your thought like oh my daughter is scared shitless she's making a scene and embarrassing us it's like fuck off that is absolutely heartless and cruel to think that way they bring her to the cliff, and she starts, she goes even further, like, into fear, and basically goes ballistic, and as she starts saying, don't throw me off the cliff again, I came back beautiful, I, 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 That line got to be really bad. And even, again, just thinking about it again. Like, even just ignoring the fact that obviously the, the girl had, like, knowledge of a previous life or whatever, you, however you want to put it. And, like, presumably actively chose to come back to life a second time more beautiful to appease her parents to, so they would love her. It's like... Just the fact that a child would say something like that would be that, like, horrifying, like, would be that.
I have a, I have a very notable reaction towards anything connected to child abuse, endangerment, a anything that would cause a child to a act or think or speak that way just really upsets me more than almost anything else. So this this specific short, I guess you would call it, really got to me. It, I mean, it, I also have a thing about a, like abusive or neglectful or terrible parents in general. And so it's like the combination of all of that, uh, uh, like working together and everything. It's like the parents like miss, uh, like not loving their child because she's quote unquote ugly. The and saying she's of the devil because they she doesn't look like them and everything in terms of like beautiful features. And then like you know killing their baby, throwing her off a fucking cliff. And, and then they have another one that is conventionally attractive like them and, and they're like they're all happy and 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 and, 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 and they're all happy with her but but then I'm just I, I'm not okay I, I'm not okay. I'm, tr I'm trying to breathe. I'm trying to keep calm. But this is like really fucking upset me. Again, I have to, I have to move on. We can't talk about that anymore. Um, the last of these shorts was uh, what you can't see. And this one also for some reason has like 25 minutes of fan stories at the end that doesn't have any animation or sound effects or anything it's just it, it's just um the the narrator the i can't remember her name but speaking in front of the camera with a little overlay uh sapphire um so i as i said in in the reaction we're just skipping that obviously um unless venom wants me to react to that i guess but I don't know. I feel like that would be a boring reaction because there's nothing I'm actually reacting to outside of the audio. So it's like... I don't know. I'd probably end up getting distracted by something just because there's no visuals to accompany to accompany it. Uh, them, I guess. I guess there's like five of them because it says today's story is from and it shows five names. Um... But let's talk about the actual story of, like, the main story of the episode. So there's this woman who works in a in a hospital. It's an old hospital built in the 1800s. Uh, it was originally, I think they said, like, a hotel or something. But then it ended up being converted into a, or no, was it a schoolhouse? It was something like that. It was something smaller. But it was converted into a hospital in the early 1900s. And so she's working there, and she, most of the people there don't seem to like her very much. They seem to ignore her most of the time. But there's one person who is very friendly towards her, and apparently this person likes to tell her ghost stories and everything. She doesn't believe any of them, because she's a Christian, apparently. That's the reason. It's like, okay. Uh, as I said in the reaction, it's like, what, what does that have to really do with it? Like, being an atheist doesn't mean you automatically believe in ghost stories. Or just not being a Christian, I guess. Being any uh, religion or religious belief system. Doesn't automatically mean you believe in ghosts while Christians don't. Um, so that, that was a weird detail in there. That I just felt like was unnecessary and just didn't really make sense. <laughs> but okay, whatever. Um... One day, she's, like, going to take a body down to the basement or whatnot. Um, she's going with a cop and everything. Procedural stuff. Um, they get on the elevator to go down, but it won't let them go down. Somehow, the elevator unnaturally keeps just bringing them to the same floor, despite going in one direction. Which is, like, 
very unnatural. And the fact that the cop like asks her in an accusatory way, like it actually says in accusatory way, are you pranking me? It's like, what? How? How would someone pull off a prank like that? Okay, the elevator's going down. It, 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 it stops briefly and makes like a little shake or whatnot, but then continues very quickly. And it's still going down. How would that keep having you end up on the same floor? That doesn't even pretend to make sense. How would someone pull a prank like that? But they finally decide to just like go down the ramp, she said. And like not stairs, but like a ramp, I guess. Which I, I guess makes sense if you're uh, carrying a, like you're transporting a body with a, a, a one of the hospital gurney bed things. So yeah. So they go down, they reach the basement and she starts hearing noises uh, that she starts hearing her voice specifically. She thinks it's the cop at first, but it's not him. Suddenly the cop is attacked uh, out of nowhere. Uh, he gets this bruise on his neck and everything, as we find out. Um, but everything is like, oh, everything's super spooky. They see, like, a, a shadowy figure go through the wall. And so they freak out and, you know, run. They, they run and go back up to the first floor. She checks on him. That's when she finds the bruise and everything forming. As if he were punched in the back of the neck. And so when talking to her friend about it, her friend reveals that she's being, uh, that the, and the reason why all of the other staff at the hospital are kind of talking about her is because apparently everyone there can see ghosts. And our, our main character, our speaker, are, is being um, haunted, I guess you could say, by a very specific ghost who might be a, a former like veteran and whatnot a, a, a deceased veteran but who seems to have a thing for her and everything currently um and it seems to be very obsessive and the episode kind of ends with like you seeing the spirit on her by her shoulder and everything and it's like so it, it's kind of like a typical ghost story it's a typical creepy ghost story. Um, it, it's it's nothing special, but it's it's still very entertaining and it's well told by Sapphire and I guess whoever like wrote it. Was this what was this one based on? Did it say? I don't remember if it said. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Because some of these are like based on urban legends and everything. Uh, this says it was inspired by Elsie Bannon, so I guess like. A story. Oh yeah, was this the one that said it was like a true story or something? Um, that that might be the case. But like you see the spirit at the end, it's like this old man looking dude with like creepy eyes and everything, just like shoulder on, or chin on her shoulder and everything. And it's like, yeah, creepy imagery and all, but... And again, it was good. It was well told. It, the, the writing of it all was, was good. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I can enjoy just a simple spooky ghost story sometimes. Um, I'm just saying it, it wasn't anything special all in all. And that kind of seems to be the theme for this uh, set. It's like, okay, we have something that gets really emotional and then something that's really not that special or like super exciting. And then another one that gets really emotional and then another one that's not super special or exciting. That, that seems to be how this one went. Um, if I had to say my least favorite, I would probably say it's the House of Dune just because of how unclear the ending is. Like, we've had a few of these that have been open-ended at the end um, that have been, like, legitimately, like, left open for you to kind of interpret and all. Um, and that's fine, but this one's open-ending. It's like, it's unclear what even happened. Like, you're supposed to be scared by, like, oh, the fact that they go up there and he's dead. But it's, like, it's unclear if at all if it was, like, some kind of supernatural force or if it was his choice. And it's, like, 
I mean, either option is not good, mind you, but the fact that it leaves that so confusingly open-ended, the way it's handled, just... It left me more confused at the end than anything, and that's not exactly the reaction I want to feel at the end of these, you know? I, I want to feel like I actually still understand it. But it's, it's too open-ended, if that makes any sense. Uh, for specifically the story being told. Um, the thing is, it's hard to say which one was my favorite between Switched Bags and Child of the Cliff. Simply because Child of the Cliff made, makes me so, like, insanely emotional. Um, in terms of raw anger and, and sorrow and pain. Lots of pain. <laughs> That it, it, it feels fucking weird to call it my favorite of this set. But the fact of the matter is, I was more invested in it than Switched Bags. And it's like, it, it was the one that definitely left the biggest impact on me. It, none of these really scared me in the traditional sense. Um, though the first one, um, Switch Bags, was probably the most, like, classically scary just because it's a real-life situation and it's a very horrifying situation. But it's like none of them, like, were really, like, like, this was, a like, probably the least scary set just in general, but more so the most upsetting set. <laughs> just, just emotionally destroying me rather than actually spooking me at all um so i guess I, I guess just based on the fact that it did have the biggest impact on me child of the cliff would be my technical favorite but again it does feel very fucking weird calling it that or referring to it that way just because of how much it did legitimately upset me to the point of bringing me to tears and making me just like lose it and everything and even beyond the, like, the insane levels of anger, just the fact that it made me, like, cry so hard. Like, it's, it's, it's weird to refer to something that does that as a favorite of mine in, in, in any kind of context. Because <laughs> it sounds, it sounds very macabre to say that. It, it's like, am I, a, I'm not a member of the Adams family. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm not going to look at something like that in a positive light. <laughs> Um, I'm not cool enough to be Wednesday Adams. <laughs> um, though I am very interested in that series, uh, when that comes out, I think in, uh, the fall. Um, but yeah, um, this set was obviously a lot for me. And Venom... I don't know if you suggested Child of the Cliff knowing how it would affect me, but if you did, and I, I say this with kindness, but fuck you. <laughs> fuck you for making me experience that and making me that upset. Uh, I, obviously, I mean that in jest, but... Like, oh my god, if you knew that would upset me that much and that's why you suggested that, it's like, wow, dude. You are a sadist. <laughs> because, like, that did make me that upset. It did. If you didn't know, then okay, I guess. But, oh. The worst part about it, and I'm going to try to keep myself composed here. The worst part about it is... The fact that it's it's also like the switching bags one, unfortunately, semi realistic. Like outside of like the I guess more supernatural elements of the end where the daughter like reveals she like remembers everything and actively chose to come back beautiful and all. It's like outside of that, it's like they I've heard stories about parents who have done that who have. Thrown, who, like, thrown their baby in a dumpster and all. It's like, obviously, that's a, kind of a, a... Almost like a trope at this point. But it's like... 
I've heard stories of people who have done that. People who have killed their baby for one reason or another. And every time I hear the stories like that, yeah, it does get me that violently angry. Because, it, as I said in the reaction, it's like, you don't deserve to be a parent if you do something like that. And I was like saying like, oh, you deserve death and everything and it deserves to, you deserve for it to be painful. And it's like, honestly, I kind of can't find a reason to argue with that idea. Like e even more clear headed currently and more composed. Like if, if you are, a, if you're a parent and you do something like that and make your child after already killing a child and everything make them force them for one into that and and claim that they're causing a scene when they're scared out of their mind but then also um like make it so that they they they're so scared that they are like crying and telling you that they're sorry and they came back beautiful so you would love them and shit it's like if you would even like get into anything like that and i've heard again i've heard stories about like kids who have said like similar things or even just with like oh i'll behave this time and stuff and it's like I i'll be good i'm sorry and kids like re responding like that to abusive parents and all it's like any parent that abusive that endangering that evil I, I'm sorry, but I, I can't hold back in that regard, and I truly believe they deserve death. And I do believe it, they, that it, they deserve for it to be, pain, to be painful. That shit just, it, 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 it angers and enrages me and, and depresses me to such a degree that it's like, I, I'm sorry, it's like... It's kind of right there under rape for me as being one of the worst things a person can do. Obviously, rape is without question the worst thing anyone can do. If you rape someone, it's like you very much deserve death. And I, I'm a person who doesn't agree with the death penalty. I'm a person who, um, who believes that everyone should that we shouldn't kill people because it's not right it's not morally right to just like you know oh this person killed or raped someone let's just kill them right back it's like that's not okay but that doesn't mean i i i don't believe they don't deserve death i can still say they deserve death without thinking that we should actually execute them and parents like this who are like that or obviously anyone who rapes anyone yeah they deserve death they deserve painful horrible death I, I i i i can't view it any other way there's there's just from a moral perspective i i can't like say that they are deserving of a second chance there's it's just those are certain crimes that i cannot abide by and again i'm a person who's kind of all for second chances i'm a person who believes that even criminals should be given a chance to be reformed. And that's what our prisons should be doing instead of treating them like shit. But that's a that's an entire like rage for another day. <laughs> um but it's like it's just like certain things it's like just bother me that much to where it's like I can't I, I just can't find any way to abide to bi abide by it or to, to, to I, I can't find any way to make any argument for the person who committed those crimes. I can't defend them in any way because I feel that they are the worst of the worst and it's just it upsets me to a very, very heavy degree. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing I, I, I cry on this channel somewhat regularly. 
because otherwise that would have been very intense like for maybe some of you viewing this uh I, I think you you got I think you all are prepared by now to know that I'm a crier that I get emotional really easily and, and so it's like it, it, again if I if I didn't if I didn't like cry at any of my other reactions and that one suddenly set me off it's like that would probably be a lot more intense than it would than normal <laughs> but yeah um so thanks for that venom. <laughs> Thanks for making me so, uh, viscerally upset. <laughs> um, but again, I, I kind of, I, I, I'll kind of say that, like, I, I feel that was the point of the story. I feel like this one was meant to make you that upset. And honestly, if you don't get that upset over a story like that, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Um, so, so I can't really hold it against the story because I feel like, again, it, it's intentional that it gets you that upset, but it, it, it's like a part of me. It's just like, I don't like being that upset. I hate how I feel when I'm that upset. So it's like, I'm also just in a, even though I'm kind of laughing about it now and everything, just talking about it at the end and I, I'm more composed again, I'm. I would not say I'm in a good place right now, admittedly. Emotionally, I, I'm just not in a good place. And, and so... I, I, I definitely am going to have to do something else, uh, whether reacting or watching something else just on my own. Like right after this, just to get my mind off of that, because holy shit, I am not okay. Um... I need to end this video. I need to like splash water on my face or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, Venom. If you want to request more of these, though, um, I, I know you are, like we're saying like you weren't really thinking of doing it last time or something. Um, but I would love to re react to more of these. Um, I know. I think you said you chose these ones because they're the ones that stood out to you or whatnot. But again, if you find if, if you think of any more that w that you think would be good. I, I am more than willing to react to more of these. Um, because I, I, I did really enjoy reacting to these. Like, they even the ones that didn't end up being as good, like, still. But anyways, like I said, I should probably end this. I just wanted to leave that little thing in the end there. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.